Good morning. In this video, I'm going to be talking about snubber diodes, also known as flyback diodes, freewheeling diodes, suppressor diodes, clamp diodes, amongst other names. Whatever they're called, the purpose is the same, to stop an inductive high voltage kick from ruining your electronics. So let's see how it works. So here's a simple circuit. On the left is a battery, which could be either a real battery or a DC power supply. Note that this technique can't be used for AC supplies, otherwise the diode would short circuit the power supply every half cycle and all would not end well. This is only good for direct current. The battery is connected through a switch, which controls the current, to a solenoid operated valve. To start with, the switch is open and no current is flowing. When the switch is closed, current begins to flow around the circuit. The current flowing through the coil develops a magnetic field. This attracts the plunger, moving it and opening the valve. So far so good. But look what happens when we open the switch. The current is cut off, but there is still energy stored in the magnetic field. This energy has to go somewhere. What happens is that as the magnetic field starts to collapse, it induces a current in the coil which wants to keep on pushing around the circuit at the same level and in the same direction as before. But the circuit is broken and all it sees is the open circuit caused by the switch. So we have current trying to flow, but the open circuit presents a very high resistance. Remember Ohm's law. If you only know one equation in electronics, make it this one. That the voltage across a device, V, is equal to the current I flowing through the device multiplied by its resistance R. At the instant the switch is open, the collapsing magnetic field in the coil tries to keep the current I constant. But as the resistance of the circuit increases, so the voltage across the coil also increases. If we measure the voltage across the coil, we see that as the field collapses, it shoots up. It could easily reach hundreds of volts until either something breaks, you get arcing across the switch, or eventually the power dissipates in the wiring. So what can we do to prevent this? This is where the diode comes in. Let's try the whole thing again, this time with a diode connected across the coil as shown. Current can only flow through a diode in one direction, as indicated by the arrow forming the symbol. Once again, we close the switch and current starts to flow through the coil. Note that no current flows through the diode because current can't flow through the diode in this direction. The diode is said to be reversed biased, and at this point it has no effect on the circuit whatsoever. The magnetic field builds up in the coil, moving the plunger, opening the valve, exactly as before. So what happens now when you open the switch and cut off the current? Now the diode is forward biased and the current can circulate harmlessly as shown until all the energy stored in the magnetic field has dissipated. So how do you choose the diode? Well, let's look at a typical data sheet. This is for a 1N4001 general purpose diode. There's a lot of data here, but you only really need to worry about two parameters. First, the maximum DC blocking voltage, which needs to be larger than your supply voltage. And second, the maximum forward current, which depends on the normal operating current of the coil. Note that for most of the common applications, this current will only flow for a very short time while the magnetic field is collapsing. So while the datasheet for this diode shows a maximum continuous operating current of only one amp, it can handle much larger currents for shorter periods of time. So this device would be good for coils running substantially more than one amp. There are a couple of other things such as switching time, but for most applications you won't need to worry about this. For say a 12 volt circuit, the 1N4001 will be fine. I'll finish with a couple of notes. First, connect the diode as close as possible to the coil, ideally right at the coil terminals. This will ensure that all of the current developed by the coil will be dissipated locally, minimizing the chance of damage or electrical interference messing with other parts of the circuit. Second, it's important to connect the diode the right way around. Many diodes have a band around one end, and this corresponds to the bar at the end of the diode symbol as shown. With a diode connected as shown, reverse biased, that is with the stripy end of the diode connected to the positive supply, all will be well and the circuit will function as expected. 
If, however, you connect the diode the wrong way around, the power supply is short-circuited and it will not end well. So that's snubber diodes. Thanks for watching.